A co-worker reached out to me and asked me if I could look at their lawnmower, and of course, I said yes. The issue was that I should have asked them what brand it was because, to be honest, if I had known it was going to be this brand, I would have told them no. I've got better things to do like my taxes and trying to plan my next trip to a landfill, which is where this one belongs. Unfortunately, it's here now, so I guess I could at least take a look at it. In today's video, we look at this PowerSmart lawnmower, and the problem is that, quite surprisingly, it won't start. Now, I didn't get much information about it, but apparently it was only used once or twice before the season was over, and then it went into storage. And just like clockwork, when the next mowing season came around, it wouldn't start. To be honest, I thought this was going to be an easy case, but it turned out it was anything but that. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. First off, if you didn't know, this has to be one of the worst mowers I've had a chance to work on. The quality of the materials is questionable, and its durability is just what you expect from an overseas engine maker. Now, it looks like a mower, but if you stare at it long enough, you'd swear you could see it coming apart while it's sitting still. Joking aside, do not buy this mower. The first thing to do would be to see what I'm working with. So it looks like we have plenty of gasoline in the tank, although who knows what kind of condition it's in. That means we'll need to drain it so we can examine it. Now the oil should look great for only being used a couple of times. However, it seems to be a bit dark for only being a couple of hours on the engine. So I'm beginning to question the information I've been given, but at least it's at the right level for once. Let's see what happens when we try and start it. Of course, it's not going to start, and the best part is it didn't even try. Next, I'm going to throw out the carb and the fuel as a reason why it won't start, and I'll do that by putting some fuel into the carb's throat. So this is a first for me. This engine just jammed. I can't pull on the rope at all. In this situation, do not use the rope to free the engine because you could break the rope or possibly damage the recoil system. Unfortunately, this puts our troubleshooting to a standstill, but I'm pretty confident I'll be able to free it. In the meantime, I'll get it up on the table so we can get a better look at it. With the mower on the table, it's much easier to drain the fuel, so that's what we'll start with. So the gasoline is not in terrible condition. By the color, it seems to be only a few months old, so it's still usable. I also don't see any water at the bottom of the jar, but if there was any water in it, it would have made its way to the carb. So we'll have to drain the fuel from there as well, emptying the rest of the gasoline that's left in the tank. Now there's still no water here either, so I have a feeling the fuel in the carb will be fine as well. While the mower is at a convenient height, I'm also going to lubricate the wheels. The main reason to do this is to keep them from wearing out on the axle, which would make it wobble like a shopping cart at Mega Mart. Now this is going to spin for quite some time, so we'll come back to it later on and see if it's still spinning or if it's finally stopped. So if I try turning the engine by using the blade, it still doesn't want to rotate, which is quite surprising. Now I don't want to use too much force, so I'm going to remove the spark plug just in case it's hydro locked. If so, taking out the plug would help to get it free. Now after getting the spark plug out, I'm not surprised to see that it's an overseas plug, so we're going to have to check it and see if it still works. And the plug is not covered in oil or fuel, so I don't think it's hydro locked. Unfortunately, even with the spark plug out of the engine, it's still not free to rotate, which is not a good sign. And if we take a look back at the wheel, it's still spinning, so we'll have to check on it later on. The next thing I want to do is check to see if there's an issue with the valve train that's keeping the engine from spinning. The issue is that if the problem isn't here, it might be inside the engine, which is a really bad situation to have. After trying to free the engine again, this time it finally breaks free and it's now rotating just like it should. I really can't explain what happened to it, but for me, I think there's a clearance issue inside the engine that's causing it to jam up. Now since the engine is now free and I'm about to lose my lighting, this would be a great time to test if we have a spark from the ignition system. So it looks like we have spark from the ignition system, which means we have two of the three major components for this engine to start, fuel and spark. The last thing we need to check for is compression, but since we have the valve train open and visible, I want to check the valve lash. Now normally I would take a shortcut by putting one of the valves all the way down, but this time I'm going to put the piston to top dead center where the piston is at the top of the compression stroke. 
I do apologize, but I don't remember what the valve lash is or the clearance between the top of the valve and the rocker arm is supposed to be for this particular engine. So I'm going to use a five thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. What I'm going to do is slide the feeler gauge into the clearance and feel how tight it is. It should just drag in the clearance, but unfortunately it's very loose. Now I would normally find out what the clearance had grown to, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to make my adjustments. To adjust the clearance, I'm going to hold the inner bolt and loosen the jam nut. Once loose, I'll then make small adjustments to the inner bolt until the feeler gauge just drags in the clearance. I'll then hold the bolt and then tighten the jam nut and then check the clearance one more time and make adjustments if I need to. I'll then do the same procedure for the upper rocker arm. So why is this important? If the valve lash is too large, it could open the valves later than it's supposed to. And if the valve lash is too tight, it could affect the engine compression. Both of these situations will cause an issue with how the engine runs. Once I've set the clearance, I'll then clean the gasket surface on the head and also remove the old gasket material from the valve cover. After that, I'll then apply a rather messy bead of gasket maker on the valve cover, carefully replace it, and then install the bolts. Now, I'm not going to tighten the bolts yet. Instead, I'm going to have the bolts finger tight. I'll then let the gasket maker set up for a few hours, then go back and tighten the bolts. The next item I want to check is the key on the flywheel. The reason I want to check it is because we might have spark, but if it's happening at the wrong time, it won't help to start the engine. Now the flywheel has two magnets on it. When it passes by the ignition coil, it will then produce a spark at the plug. So this is another option as to why this engine might not be starting. If the flywheel is keyed to the crankshaft and if the key gets sheared, it will then cause the spark to happen at the wrong time. So how does the key get sheared? Now this typically happens when you hit something hard with the blade on the mower. Something like a rock, a piece of concrete, or even a stump. You'll know if that's the case because there might be a gouge somewhere on the leading edge of the blade. Now I didn't see any damage to this blade, but I still want to check it. Now after getting the plastic fan out of the way, we can finally see the keyway, but I've never seen this style before, which means I'll need to remove the flywheel to examine it. Now there are different ways to remove the flywheel, but using a puller is probably the safest way. It'll keep you from damaging the crank or the flywheel. Now with it gone, we can finally see the key. However, the key is still intact with no signs of damage. So unfortunately, that means the ignition timing is not what's keeping the engine from starting. The next thing I want to do is to do a compression test and see if that's the issue we're having. I want to try using the pull rope and see what kind of reading we get. So I'll have to put the engine back together. But before I do that, I also want to check on the spark plug and see if it's working as well. It's also been several hours since resealing the valve cover, so I want to check on that sample button I made for myself. Now, I didn't want the gasket maker to completely set up. I only want it to be a bit tacky with a lot of body. The reason why is that I didn't want it to be squished out of the mating surface by torquing the bolts down while it was still soft. So here's the sample button I made for myself, and yes, I know it's not the correct size to be tested, but then again, I'm not working on an airplane, it's just a lawnmower. It's definitely got some body to it, so I think it's safe to tighten the bolts down, and no, I'm not going to be using a torque wrench for this one either, and that's because it hasn't come back from being calibrated yet. Now to test the spark plug, I'm going to use my tester that I got from a mega online store. And since I'm not close to an outlet, I'm going to use this tiny portable power station. Now even though I don't care for this particular brand of spark plug, I do not change plugs unless they have an issue with them. So it seems the spark plug is working just like it's supposed to. Now to properly test the spark plug, I need to put it into a pressure vessel and run the test again, but I'm not equipped to do that, so this will have to do. At least we know the ignition system is working, so the last thing we need to check is the compression. For this one, I'm going to use my compression tester, and it's going to measure how much pressure the engine can make on the compression stroke. And we want to see a reading well above 100 PSI. If you need one of these, there's a link in the description. So the reading is only 75 PSI, and even though that's not close to 100, there is a good reason for it. This engine has a compression release that makes it easier to pull the rope, so the reading is going to be lower than normal. Now to overcome the compression release, we'll need to use a drill to turn the engine over. Yeah. 
So the new reading is around 120 PSI, and even though that sounds much better, it shows that we have a serious problem. This engine is already worn out, and even though the reading is low, it's more than enough to start and run. Since we know it has enough compression, I think it's time for another test start, but this time, I'm going to cheat and use the drill to help get it started. Well, that's not how I expected the test to go at all. First, it took a lot of turning before it started to run, and secondly, it was very slow to start. The last thing was that it ran a lot longer than it should have, so I wonder if the carb was supplying some fuel to the engine. There's also oil coming out of the muffler, so I have to wonder just how much oil is actually in the engine, and what kind of condition is it in. I think it'd be a good idea to inspect the oil, because I have a feeling there's something going on here. So right off the bat, there's a problem. This oil is too dark to have a couple of hours on it. In fact, if I had to guess, it looks to have at least one whole season on it. The worst part is that this oil is the same oil that was first poured into it, and if you didn't know, you need to break in an engine and then change that oil. If not, the result is that that metal that's in the oil will then cause the engine to wear out faster than it's supposed to, which is what I think happened here. In fact, there's so much metal in the oil that I'm going to have to flush the engine again to try and remove any remaining debris. Now, I don't normally do this. I only do this for extreme situations just like this one. I would not make this a regular procedure to do. Now, after dumping out the oil again, you can see there's still plenty of debris in it. That means I'm going to have to keep doing this until I don't see the metal in the pan. It's quite unfortunate, but reading the owner's manual would have prevented this situation. Now the second flush looks a lot better. Even though the gasoline is still gray, I don't see any particles in the pan like the last time. I don't think I'm going to do it again. Instead, I'm going to let any remaining gasoline evaporate inside the engine, which should take about a couple of hours to do. Then I'll put some oil back into it. Remember to follow the filling instructions for your particular engine, and remember not to overfill it. Otherwise, you could damage it. If you do overfill it, simply tip the mower over and pour some of it out. The last thing I want to do is clear the fuel jet inside the carb. However, I don't think we'll need to remove the carb based on how the engine was running during the test start. What I'm going to do is remove the bowl, and if it looks decent, I'll then clear the jet while the carb is still on the engine. Now, if I pull the bowl and it looks terrible, it's recommended that we take the carb off for a full cleaning. So there is a small amount of debris in the bottom of the bowl. However, it's not that bad at all. So I'm going to run this wire through the jet and work to clear the opening. Now, you can't see what I'm doing, and to be honest, neither can I. But what I'm doing is making sure I can push at least an inch or more of the wire into the pickup tube. If you're hitting something about a half an inch up in the tube, it means you're hitting the side of the jet. Try to push the wire in the middle of the tube, and you should get it into the jet. Once I've cleared the jet, I'll then replace the bowl and the nut and then put the same fuel we took out of it earlier back into the tank because I think it's still good and then we'll try starting it. If you're not sure your fuel is good, then replace it with some fresh fuel and save that old stuff to be used as a cleaner for grease and oil. Now I poured the old gasoline into this glass jar because it's easier to pour without making a mess. Otherwise, I'll have to use a funnel and even then that large glass jar still makes a huge mess.
So it was a bit of a slow start, but it finally started and seemed to run okay. There was also some oil in the muffler which started to burn as the exhaust started to get hot, but it cleared up after a minute or so. Now the self-propel seemed to work okay, and if you wanted to know how this self-propel stacks up against other self-propels from different brands, click at the link at the top of the screen. Now this field of grass isn't very dense, but it's much taller than the area I normally do my testing at, and to be honest, it did really well. I also have to be truthful in saying this, but I'm not sure why this engine wouldn't start, and also why it locked up the way it did during our first test start. If I had to take a guess, it had to be the massive loss in compression due to the break-in oil never being changed out. And the reason for it locking up, I'd have to say it's just a bad quality engine, and something inside the engine got out of alignment, causing it to lock up. So it's been about 30 minutes and I'm back in my normal area. The engine isn't completely cold, but I'd like to see how it starts and if it's going to smoke again out of the muffler. Well, it's still starting slow, so I'm going to guess the low compression from the engine is the cause for it. Otherwise, there's an issue with the governor. Either way, I don't expect this mower to last several seasons. In fact, I hope it makes it through this season. So in the end, this mower is working again, but to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this brand at all, and I would implore you, do not buy it. If someone asks you if you want a working lawnmower for free and it's this brand, decline the offer. This mower is not a quality machine. It might look like a lawnmower, but it's actually a boat anchor on wheels. You're simply asking for trouble if you think this mower will last half as long as any other current mower available on the market. So my question is, would you be willing to take the Power Smart Challenge and use this mower for the next season and see if you can keep it running without any major headaches? If you say yes, you're a better person than me. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.